The aquatic environment is facing a catastrophe that can lead to mass extinction of the aquatic life as we know it. Although aquatic life faces more than one threat, there is one major concern, issue, and danger that they currently face on a daily basis. It's a very common issue, and that is the pollution of our waters, bays, and oceans. What's worse is that we, humans, contribute to the destruction and damage that the aquatic environment currently faces. This destruction is happening all over the world, even where I live locally, which is why I was tasked with showing the damage that pollution has at a local park near me. So I packed up my film gear, my drone, and anything else I needed to document the current conditions that my local park faces. The park I travel to is called Hempstead Harbor, not too far from where I live. What I found there was surely nothing more than disappointing to see. Join me as I not only share with you the history of pollution at this park, but also the pollution that is still going on today. This is the pollution crisis of Hempstead Harbor. Hempstead Harbor is located in Long Island, New York. More specifically, North Hempstead. Just like many areas around the world, this park has a pollution problem and history of pollution that affected and still currently affects the creatures that occupy this particular body of water. What brought me to Hempstead Harbor is that there are factories that are around the beach, around the body of water, that were said to pollute the bay many years ago. However, even today, you will see on documentation that there is still evidence of pollution happening. From tires to plastic bags, murky water, and much more. All of this is making this environment for aquatic life very unsafe. Going back to what I mentioned before about the history of pollution at this harbor, I'll start with what has been reported. Some of the reports that I've gathered many years ago report that hypodermic needles were washing up on shore and people were accidentally stepping on them. Fortunately for me, I didn't come across any hypodermic needles as this problem was taken care of, I believe. But not to say that there isn't hypodermic needles lying around somewhere on this beach or in the water. They're, they might be there. You never know. There's always that one irresponsible person dropping stuff like hypodermic needles into the beach, into the water, and that leaves the rest of innocent people or creatures to get stung by these things. Other reports indicate that factories and garbage dumps had a major role in the pollution of this harbor many years ago. While these reported issues have been dealt with in some capacity, pollution has not been dealt with entirely. I mean just being there, I can see garbage on the beach, on the shoreline, in the water, and I can only imagine what this is doing to the aquatic life that lives in this environment, that lives at Hempstead Harbor. To get a better look and understanding of the pollution that is currently happening and being reported at this park, I sent my drone up in the air to survey the shoreline. And there is proof, I've gotten proof of pollution in these waters. Also, within safe distance, I investigated around the beach. Many different objects and trash that were not picked up were lying there on the beach and shoreline. And it's very disappointing to see that very little is being done. Walking around the beach even further, I spotted even more disheartening stuff. Underneath the boardwalk, I spotted jellyfish stranded in the sand during low tide after being washed up. They did not look to be dead, but they had garbage and plastic on top of them and near them. Even though there is more than just jellyfish at this park, all this trash is very dangerous for all these creatures to have to deal with. Once when marine organisms accidentally consume plastic or any other type of garbage because it smells similar to their actual food, 
they can choke, suffocate, and most of the time, this process can lead to death. Seeing the jellyfish stuck and the seagulls flying around and just all this garbage laying around in the parking lot, the shoreline, the beach, the water, it just makes me think, man, there are people out there that lack common decency and respect for this environment. All they got to do is once when they're done with their garbage, they can just throw it out right here in this trash bin. It's literally right there on the boardwalk. Why is your garbage floating around in the water? Why is your garbage on the shoreline? Why is your garbage all over the place? All you got to do is just throw it in the place where it belongs, not in the environment and home of the creatures that live in it. As for what should be done, it's simple. People should stop polluting. Now more than ever, we must respect and treat our waters, such as this harbor, with great care. There are many organizations on Long Island that can help do just that, such as Long Island Volunteer Center and Safe Harbor Pollution Insurance. But it's not just only those two. Those are the ones that I can think off of my head. But there are many good people out there that are doing the good work to make sure that we can make these waters safe again, that we can make sure that pollution isn't going to keep damaging the environment that these marine organisms live in. Sometimes, it's easy to forget that our planet is mostly made up of water. Three quarters, in fact. There is more aquatic life than human life on this planet. Which is why we must preserve our waters. Now more than ever. No matter how many organizations or volunteers clean up the water, lakes, rivers, oceans, for every cleanup, there's always more than one careless person contributing to the damage of the planet's aquatic environment. However, nature has a way of regenerating itself and fixing itself, but it is only if we allow it to, and that we help it heal. With that, I leave you with this saying, if you haven't heard this already, let me be the first to share this saying with you. Be part of the solution, not the pollution.